Here are the first things you should do to get the best performance, the best battery life and security, including some of the new AI features with any of the new S24 phones. And most of them will apply to any Samsung phone. Now, the first one that is worth considering is a decent case. Now, I really prefer these cases from a company called Magback. They're not sponsoring this video, but I've used them on literally every single phone that I've owned before. I had it for the S22 Ultra. And these cases are so fantastic because they actually stick to any like metal objects. They're great for the gym because you can stick it to the machines in front of you. Now this is the Sunset Aramid fiber case from Pataka. Again, it's really, really sleek, sticks very, very closely to the phone itself, so it doesn't add much bulk. But once you have the case sorted, the first thing, and let's dig into the settings now, is to go into the settings, go straight to your home screen. I'm gonna go to the home screen layout. Now you get two options here, home screen and app screens and home screen only. Now, I always prefer home screen only because once you have this set, now whenever you swipe up, it automatically searches. Whereas if you have it set for the other way around where you have it set to home screen and apps, whenever you swipe up, it then doesn't automatically select the search bar. So you have to tap there and then type the things you want. And it's a personal preference here, but I just prefer swiping up and then typing apps rather than having to swipe through and trying to figure out where the app is that I want to launch. So that's the first one. Whilst we are also there in the home screen settings, when I go back into there again, we are also going to change the home screen grid to a five by six, just so you can fit as much as possible on your home screen. And then also change the folder grid from three by four to four by four. Again, this just shows you the most uh, content available on your phone screen at one time. A few more settings here. We're gonna go down to app icon badges here. And where it says number, just below this, it says notifications on app icons and touch and hold the app to show the notifications. If you turn this on, this is a really neat feature where if you find an app Play Store, for example, tap and hold, and it will actually show you the notifications that's within that app without having to go inside it and actually read the notifications and clear them off if you don't want to. So that's a really handy one that I normally use. Now, the next thing I would recommend everyone does is install Keeper, a separate standalone password manager onto your S24 phone. Now, why not use Samsung Knox? Well, personally, I use lots of different devices, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a OnePlus, a Pixel, even going between Mac and Windows. Keeper works across all of these devices, whereas Samsung Knox really only works across Samsung devices. Now, also Keeper allows me to generate unique and secure passwords for absolutely everything, so I'm not using the same password across all my logins. Keeper also supports pass keys, which is the kind of next generation of passwords where you basically aren't using passwords and it stores more than just passwords. It stores things like passports, ID, credit card details, and then you can share those also with any trusted people that you have without having to write them down or kind of give them access into your password manager. Now, unlike others, Keeper haven't ever been breached and they run regular tests to ensure their security is the best in the business. Now you can sign up, use the link down below to grab a discount. And thank you so much Keeper for sponsoring this video. Now, what I am gonna do is tap on backup data because you wanna make sure, of course, all of your Samsung data is backed up and all of these are switched off right now. I wanna switch all of them on to make sure we are backing up all of our contacts, our calendars, our settings, our home screen, the apps, the voice recordings. And I'm not gonna allow backup while roaming because I don't wanna eat through my data if I'm roaming abroad or anything. That is the first one. And then back up my data through Google Drive. Now I have a uh, Google Drive, I have like unlimited data. So I'm gonna again, make sure I tick the backup by Google one on this account and make sure that all of these again are selected and uh, backed up. But what I will suggest is going into your Google Photos app and actually selecting the account you want to back up your photos from in here. Now I have a couple of accounts on this phone. I've got my own personal account, my work account, which has unlimited storage. So I'm gonna choose my work accounts. I'm gonna turn on backup. I'm gonna skip through all the kind of setup articles. And now it's gonna make sure that any photos I take on this phone are gonna get uploaded to my Google Drive account to make sure they're all backed up and protected. Now, the next one we're gonna go into is actually to speed up your phone because out of the box, they do feel a little bit sluggish from time to time. So we're gonna go and unlock a hidden menu. So you go to the about phone section, we scroll down and go to software information. I'm gonna tap the build number a few times. And if you see here, we have now unlocked developer mode has been enabled. And if you go back one step, go back another step, you will have an extra option here that wasn't there before called developer options. Now, if you scroll down in here, there's lots of things that you don't really want to touch in this menu, but there are a few settings which you will want to touch when we get there, and that is to change the animation speed. So you can say here, window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animated duration scale. We're gonna change all of those to 0.5 rather than being 1X. And that is gonna essentially speed up all of the times it animates the you know, windows sliding in and sliding out, and generally just makes your, feel, your phone feel a lot faster. Next up is changing the behavior of the side power button because by default, 
it's gonna be Bixby and nobody that I know uses Bixby on these phones. So we're gonna change the behavior of that. So we're gonna go into the side key options here. I'm just gonna search for it to get there quickly, side button. And it's gonna change it from wake Bixby to having the power off menu. And that means, again, you can just hold the power button and we're gonna get the options to obviously restart the phone, power it off and a few other bits as well. Much better than accidentally triggering Bixby. Okay, let's hit some display options now. So again, back into the settings, down to display and there are quite a few things on here that are worth going through. The first I will go into, because this one drives me nuts, is the navigation bar. Now by default, it's set to buttons, so you get the three buttons back here. Whereas I always prefer swipe gestures, so you can kind of swipe up and everything. It just kind of saves that extra space down the bottom where you don't lose them to the button. So that is the first one to do. You can swipe back and forth between the apps just like we have done there and get back to where we were before. We're gonna go back to the main settings now for display and just run you through a few other options here that are worth considering. Now, first of all is dark mode. Now dark mode will potentially save you a small amount of uh, battery life because it's not having to brighten the screen as much. Now you can manually enable this between light and dark mode. Some people prefer it dark mode all the time. Some people prefer light. I prefer setting the scheduled option. So essentially sunset to sunrise when it gets dark outside, your phone will change into dark mode. And so that's what I'm going to go with. The next thing I'm gonna suggest you do is change the screen resolution. Now this goes up to quad HD, but comes shipped with full HD. Again, this is very much a personal opinion. If you want to go for the very best, very highest quality, then you can knock it up to quad HD. It will have a slight impact to battery life, again, as with anything does. But most people I find actually settle on full HD because they don't really notice much of a difference between the two. So again, quad HD, if you want the highest quality possible, most people generally will stick with full HD, which to be fair is what it's shipped with. Other things to go through are the font size and style here. Now by default, it will come with, uh, you know, default font style. I generally knock the font size down a little bit just so you can fit a little bit more on your screen. And then the font style as well, you can choose one if you want to, or you go with the default font style on there. I'm just gonna go with the Samsung One font style on there. Next down is screen zoom. Again, I normally go one down just so you can fit a little bit more on the screen so you're not kind of wasting all that screen real estate on, you know, you've got quite a large screen in front of you. You might as well make the most of all the uh, screen size and resolution you've got there. Although that now makes it really tiny to see on the video. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna knock those back up again, just so it's easier for you to uh, actually see what's going on. Still in the display settings, I'm gonna go into edge panels now. Now this is the little option over here. You can swipe in from the side and you can grab a few apps. So I'm gonna customize this. You want to go to panels and apps, tap edit. And now you can customize which apps are showing on the right hand side here and you can drag a few in here you can drag maybe the bbc news in there and drag that onto the menu here and this just means that whatever app you're in whatever you're doing on your phone at any time you can just swipe in from the right hand side and get access to that so actually one thing that i'm going to put in here is going to be let's get rid of bbc news i'm going to put in my password manager because again sometimes i'm in an app or i'm in a website and i need quick access to my password manager so that's going to go in there along with my messaging app YouTube and a web browser. A couple more now in the display settings before we leave them are the screen timeout. Now, if you tap into here, of course, you can change the screen timeout to something more usable, maybe like two minutes, so the screen doesn't go off whilst you're using it. But we're gonna enable this option at the bottom here, which says keep the screen on whilst viewing it. And this uses the camera on your phone to detect when you're looking at it. So again, you're not watching a video and it thinks you've stopped, so it just turns the screen off. Worth switching that one on straight away. And then lastly, in the display settings again, if you use a screen protector, this one is for you. Go down to touch sensitivity and tick that one because when you have screen protectors, it kind of reduces the, obviously, the amount of touch that the phone can detect. So worth enabling that setting. Next is going into some of the advanced settings here. We're gonna go down to uh, the advanced features and we're gonna go to motions and gestures. Now there are a few settings in here that are worth uh, enabling. and I'm gonna go through them one by one just so you know what's what. Lift to wake, I like tapping that one so you can just pick up the phone and it wakes up as soon as you pick it up rather than having to kind of tap it or have to hit the power button. You've also got double tap to turn screen on and double tap to turn off the screen. I think this is a really handy feature to have just so you can really quickly wake up your phone. So if you're sat there, it's off on the desk, double tap and it turns the screen on. You can check your notifications, those kind of things. And then again, double tap to turn the screen off. So if there's an empty part of the screen, you can just double tap the screen and it turns your phone off without having to do that whole kind of crab grip thing to unlock your phone. Going back one step here. So we're still in the advanced features section. There are a couple of options I want to enable still. So there are video brightness is one that's worth enabling. Now by default, it sets normal, but if you just tick the bright button, it means whenever you watch a video on something like YouTube, Netflix, 
Disney Plus, you know, any of these services here, it would just brighten the screen and make it more vivid, vivid and vibrant whilst you're watching the footage. So that is one that's worth enabling from here. And then lastly, in the advanced intelligence. Now this is some of the new AI features that come with the S24 series, where all the AI kind of clever stuff, most of it's done on device, some of it's done in the cloud. But if you scroll down to the bottom of this advanced intelligence section, you can tick this box to only process data on your device. And that is mostly all of the cloud features like the generative AI where it kind of generates new backgrounds and replaces the backgrounds and things for you. Generally speaking, I would leave that switched off, but if you're one that's worried about your data going onto the internet, then certainly switch that feature on if you like. Okay, next up, let's customize some of these swipe down menu bu kind of buttons you get up here. So swipe down twice, click on the edit button, and then you've got the two options here. You've got the very top row of buttons, and then you've got the full kind of layout of everything. We're gonna edit the full layout. And there are a few options that you don't get by default that are on kind of these quick swipe menus. The first of them being the wireless battery share. So if you just scroll across here, we're gonna look for wireless power share. We're gonna drag and drop that up onto the menu. So that one's worth having up here. We can just run through these just to see if there are any other ones worth having. So again, like personal preference, you might want some of these that I'm not gonna have, but you can add the ones on that you do wish to have. Live transcribe, that's one of the new features that's worth having up there. Uh, maybe live caption as well, that's worth having up there too. Uh, we've got a uh, kids menu, which again, if you've got kids that might use your phone, that could be a good one. We have got uh, Dolby Atmos, if you want to enable that. Um, and then I've got Home Assistant installed, so I've got a few extra buttons here. But that is generally it. So I'm going to click on done. And now when I swipe down from my menu and then swipe across, I can just tap the wireless power sharing menu. Then I can flip my phone over and then charge another phone by just kind of popping it on the back of here. Although it won't because my phone is currently off, so that's not gonna work. So next up is some of these sound settings now, and these weirdly are disabled by default, and um, I'm not sure why. So if you go into sounds and vibration, scroll down to where it says sound quality and effects, and you'll notice both of the Dolby Atmos settings are switched off by default. But if you switch them on, you'll get much better audio, both when playing music, but also when playing games and watching content and everything else you're doing on there as well. So definitely switch those on. Next up, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here to look for uh, device care and I'm going to scroll down and go to app protection. Now this is switched off by default. It's basically a free antivirus system for your phone to scan it for anything malicious. So switch this one on and also tap the scan phone button. Uh, maybe don't do it right now. Do it after the end of this video because it takes maybe just two or three minutes just to cycle through and it will scan through your phone and look for anything malicious, any dodgy apps, particularly if you're loading apps from third party app stores, it's well worth keeping this enabled and doing a scan from time to time. Maybe if the phone's running a bit slow, then run that through as well. Whilst we are in the device care section, what I would also suggest going to and have a look at the performance profile. Now this was a big change for me on the S23 Ultra. Now by default, it does come in the standard performance profile, but I noticed that if you switched it to the light performance profile, I didn't personally notice any difference in the phone. It didn't work any slower, but the battery life was definitely a noticeable improvement. So if you are struggling with battery life on your phone, you could change this to the light profile and hope to have a positive impact on your battery life and without noticing really any difference in the phone whatsoever. So I'm actually gonna leave this on light for now. As you know, I'm gonna change it to standard and just see how the, how the battery life works because again, just got this phone. We're gonna see how it performs well on the standard profile. Now, next up, let's talk about notifications because they do kind of drive me nuts from time to time on Android phones. So we go into the settings again, go down to notifications, tap on advanced notifications, and then on notification history. Now this is off by default, but actually by switching this on, you will have a list. Well, I had a list and now it's not there because I switched it off and on again, but it will list all of the notifications you've got on your phone. So if your phone buzzes or makes a noise, you're not quite sure why or what's going on. You can always go into notification history and see exactly what's going on on your phone, which is a huge, huge help. Whilst we are also in here, I'm going to tick the option for show the snooze button. Sometimes an alert comes through. I'm not quite ready to deal with it. So I like to snooze it and make sure that I still reply to it, but you know, maybe five, 10 minutes time. So worth having that enabled if you want to do that too. Now let's go on to the lock screen settings. Now again, the always on display is kind of on by default, but also kind of switched off. So we're going to go to the lock screen and always on display. We're going to tap where it says always on display and when to show. If you tap onto here, you'll see here it only shows the always on display when you tap to show it, which isn't really an always on display. Uh, now I like setting this to auto because it does leave it on by default, but as you see here, it shows all the time unless your phone detects that it's in a dark place, such as purse, pocket or a dark room. So if you wanna kind of place your phone in your bedroom when you're sleeping, it will turn the always off, always on display off. Too many ons and offs here. 
Um, or you can just have it set to always enabled. So even if you're sleeping, you can quickly glance over your phone and see the time and notifications and all those kind of things. I'm going to leave it as auto. And then back in the main lock screen and always on display settings here, if you tap on extend unlock, now I believe this did used to be called smart unlock or smart lock. So we're gonna go into these settings and now you get the same settings we had with smart lock, which is turning on the body detection, which means if you are um, moving, then your phone will stay unlocked. So I'm gonna add a couple of trusted places in here. So when I'm in my home, when I'm in the office, my phone is gonna stay unlocked all the time. And then you can also add trusted devices. So if you've got a car, maybe you've got a Bluetooth watch as well. If your phone is within Bluetooth distance of those devices, then again, your phone will stay unlocked. So you can add those devices on here as well, if you wish, but something that's worth doing just so you don't have to constantly unlock your phone. But if you are someone that works at your desk for most of the day and you have to keep unlocking your phone each time you reach for it, those settings are well worth doing so you don't have to keep doing that. It gets super frustrating to have to do that like 10 times a day. Now, next up is something that I do slightly differently to most people where you'll do uh, do not disturb on your phone and you'll just kind of set it to a certain time every night. I like using modes and routines and then tapping into the sleep option on here. Now you can turn on manually or you can set on an automatic schedule which can line up with your sleep schedule which you set up on the phone itself. And then by doing it this way, rather than just doing do not disturb, you can also do other things as well. So you can see here, I turn off my always on display. I turn off things around my house, like I turn off my TV, I turn off the air conditioner, just in case for whatever reason, someone's left it switched on. It's a good way of switching everything off before you go to bed. And then it turns all the sound off on my phone. So it mutes everything, turns the ringtones down, and you can do a whole load more other things. You can turn the grayscale, dark modes, you can do more smart things, controls, and you can add other actions on here as well. There's a huge long list of things you can do when you actually go into kind of your sleep mode. And again, like modes and routines, it's probably maybe worth doing a whole separate video on this, but have a look into here because there's such a huge amount you can do here. When you exercise, you can have it say, open an app, you can get it to play a playlist for you. You can get it to do certain things. You can even get it to like send messages and like just all sorts. It's well worth going through these kind of routines. I wanna come out of these because now it's um, trying to take me through it and I don't wanna do it right now, but worth having a look through modes and routines. Maybe let me know in the comments down below or subscribe to this video if you wanna see a video all about how to use the modes and routines. So yeah, let me know. A few more to go here. And now we're gonna go into the camera settings because by default, it doesn't get set to probably what I would call the best. Now, in terms of the photo itself, you can see at the top here, it sets 12 megapixels by default. You can change that to 200 megapixels, but you'll see the uh, telephoto zooms kind of disappear. So if you go to 50 megapixels, you get the one on the five times. If you go to the 12 megapixels, you get all of the available options here. And going up to the 200 megapixel, you only get the main uh, camera up here as well. Similarly, on the video side of things, it defaults to full HD 30. Actually, you might want to be shooting in 4K 60, 4K 30, or even 8K 30. So just be worth uh, checking these if you want to. But there is a few settings on here that I would change in the actual settings here. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning because it has changed from the previous generation Samsung phones is going into intelligent optimization. Scene Optimizer is now switched off by default, whereas always used to be switched on. Now I'm gonna leave it switched off just to see how kind of how it plays, but you can also change the quality optimization. And this is kind of a, a thing that comes up a lot of the time with the whole shutter lag uh, argument with Samsung phones. People pressing the button on the phone and then wondering why the photo doesn't take until like a split second second later. Now you can change this to minimum, which means the photos will take very, very quickly. But if you set this to maximum, it has that kind of AI stuff in it where it's gonna kind of look at the scene and try and figure out the best settings and the optimal way of getting the best photo for you. But it does take like a fraction of a second longer to do that. So kind of depends which way you wanna go, whether you wanna have the fastest photos possible or slightly slower, but has the best chance of getting the best photo that you can do. Other things that are worth looking at down here, if you go into advanced picture options, you can also change from JPEG to RAW and JPEG if you want to. Most people I imagine will just leave them on to JPEG. There are one video setting here, which I will change if I have to go into the video camera in here and then back into settings which again, I'm kind of confused why it's like this, but the tracking autofocus, I have to change from 8K actually, because it doesn't work in 8K. Go back to 4K 30 into your settings. Tracking autofocus again is disabled by default. Not sure why, because if you're videoing someone on your camera, you're gonna wanna really like stay, keep the autofocus on that person. So again, one that is well worth switching on. I also like having grid lines enabled just so I can line the shots up. So again, I'm gonna select that one and location tags is disabled by default. Now I've enabled it already, but again, if you wanna have your photos tagged with the location, make them easier to find when you're searching for things, worth having that enabled as well. Now let's go and have a look at some of the app settings. We're gonna scroll down until we get to the app section. 
and then tap on default apps. Now here is where you can change if you want to use other web browsers, you can change it to Chrome or if you've got anything else installed. Maybe you've got a spam caller app installed, you can change that on here as well. You can choose a different SMS app if you've got another app installed, like I've got Beeper installed to answer my SMS messages. So this is where you do that. So worth going into those and set those settings. And then one in the general settings now, general management, we're gonna go down and tap on Samsung keyboard settings. And here is where you can actually change lots of the settings around the keyboard. If you wanna have the number key show up all the time, if you wanna have certain symbols. One thing I like switching off is the stickers. I don't really want stickers suggested whilst typing, but you can you know, turn off emojis, you can turn off predictive text. You can also change some text shortcuts here. So if you wanna type one word and then have it replace that word with something else, maybe uh, you wanna have a quick way of writing your address, you can just type one word and then it replaces it with your address. That's quite a handy one to have. And then you get just a ton of options here. You can turn on, turn off, and even if you really want to, you can replace the entire keyboard by installing one from the Play Store, and then you can swap it over from here and having a different uh, keyboard installed as well. A couple more things to do with apps now. If you go into your Play Store, tap on your profile picture in the top right-hand corner, manage apps and devices, and then see recent updates. Now you can see it, see details. It has picked up all of my pending updates on the phone. So it's worth just checking for these and updating all of the apps across your phone. And if you are installing lots of apps, because maybe this is a new phone and you're trying to figure out a good way of picking up all of the new apps for your phone. Again, if you go into the, your profile picture, manage apps and devices. If you go into uh, manage and then tap where it says installed and go to not installed, you will get a list of apps that you have previously installed on other Android phones. And it just gives you a very, very quick and easy way to run through just the apps that you know, you've used before and tick them and get them installed rather than have to search for each of them individually on the App Store. I love this way, a super, super quick way to get your apps installed. And then the kind of final one you want to do because this one will potentially take a while is scroll all the way down to the bottom, tap on software update, tap on download and install, and then just go and download the latest software update for your phone if there isn't one already. Now, Samsung periodically release software updates for your phone, so it's worth going in here fairly often just to check, make sure you've got the latest security updates and all the latest software. But otherwise than that, thank you so much for watching. Hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.